Hello Python programmers, this is Eki. Have you ever think about someone who takes the control of your brain activity? If this statement is possible, we can easily access anyone's brain and do many things either legal way or illegal way. In this video, I am going to talk about an emerging technology that is named as brain to brain communication. Normally the brain to brain communication is a useful thing for us because we already know about the brain to brain technology. If you don't know about this technology, I will give the example to you. Have you ever watched the movie X-Men? In this movie, the Professor X has the ability to control someone's mind. So the brain to brain communication is also like that. We are going to see about the real life experiment of this technology. Let's start this video. This technology starts in 1998. This experiment is started by Michael Nicolelis. He is the first person who started this brain to brain communication experiment. Firstly, he started this experiment with rats and then the team understand that to make their bodies move, the rat's brain would fire 48 neurons at a time. He and his team started to do their research in an advanced manner. In the previous experiment, they recorded 48 neurons by using rats. But in the second experiment, they used the monkey to record the neurons. And they got 100 neurons in a single monkey's brain experiment. They are believing that they can use this neuron data to make the monkey perform a task. The task is very simple. They gave a joystick to the monkey's hand and they gave the monkey a game to play. The game is, there is a circle that appears on the computer screen and the monkey is used to move a dot into the center of the circle. When the monkey moved the dot into the correct location, it was received a reward of juice. So they are conducting this game experiment on the monkey several times for analyzing the brain pattern of the monkey. Every time the monkey moved the dot into the circle, they give a reward of juice. Once they recorded the brain pattern of a monkey while playing a game with joystick, now they are placing the monkey in front of the game screen and they record the brain pattern of the monkey without a joystick. Without a joystick, the monkey wasn't able to play the game, but it can imagine how it played previously. So the team recorded the brain pattern of the gameplays with a joystick and without a joystick. And finally, they are getting the same brain pattern as the monkey in the both experiments that they are conducted. With this experiment, they are concluded using the brain signals of monkey, we can easily play the game without any physical intervention. They are explaining like, consider this scenario, a old man has paralyzed. He is not able to move his hands. Another person, he is not paralyzed. He just lifting his hand. Once we recorded that brain pattern of a person, using that pattern we can be able to move the hands of a paralyzed old man. The thing is, you have to convert the brain pattern into an electric pulse and pass an electric pattern pulse into the old man's body. So it will create a lifting movement to the old man's hand. So this is the way of brain to brain communication works. The above experiment is the first experiment of brain to brain communication. Later on, in 2013, Chandel Pratt and Andrea Stoko both studied at Washington University. They are continuing the research of brain-to-brain -brain communication. They wanted to see if they could send a message to control the physical movement from one brain to another. So this is their goal to achieve in this technology. They have started the experiment with humans using an electroencephalography cap, shortly called as EEG cap. It simply records the brain activity. They positioned two researchers in a separate area of the campus. In one room, a colleague, Rajesh Rao, played a video game using his mind. Each time Rajesh saw an enemy, he wanted to shoot in the game. He would think about pressing a button. Across campus, Stocko sat with his back to the same video game while wearing noise cancellation headphones so he wouldn't know when to respond. On his head, there was a transcranial magnetic simulation coil is present. That means a device that can emit a focused electric current to the particular body of the humans, which was positioned directly over the part of the brain that controlled the movement of his finger. When Rajesh thought about moving his finger, the signal was transmitted across the campus to Stockholm. So without any knowledge, suddenly he pressed the spacebar of his keyboard to shoot the enemy. The researchers get the feeling of amazement when the Stako punched his finger in the spacebar to shoot the enemy. After this experiment, Stako said, The first time I didn't even realize 
my hand had moved i was just waiting for something to happen so this is the wonderful technology that going to rule the future there are so many advantages that will happen when this technology is implemented we can easily apply this technology to the humans who are paralyzed or not able to move the body parts so that's all about this video if, if you want to know about this type of knowledge and new technologies subscribe to this channel and not only python we can do this kind of thing it will be a interesting stuff to know okay there will be no limit to learning the next video is the python project video i am going to show you one interesting deep learning library and we are going to do some project in that so keep share and support thanks for watching and thank you see you on next video